time out of your busy schedule to hear a little bit more about the world of analytics from yesterday, today, and what you might expect at some point in the future. Now, I don't think we should think about just today. We ought to be thinking about this big data world that we're going to experience over the coming years. I don't know about you, but <clears throat> I follow technology quite a bit, and all kinds of crazy things are happening in this tech world where data is being built, and someone's going to need to consume it. You know, they have software that does facial recognition and eye detection movement. It's going to change everything. Tons of data is being collected in television sets and mobile TVs and mobile devices and cameras in places that you might not even know exist today. Or think about micro um, fibers and having all kinds of detectors inside of fabrics that will detect all kinds of things around your body, your emotions, your movements, sending back haptic information that's going to create an onslaught of data. How about ingestible bots who are going to clean your body from the inside out as they try to detect things that are well or not so well in your, your, your body? Think about, um, oh, I don't know, personal digital devices, uh, printers. Digital printers, personal printers, 3D printers that are going to disrupt supply chains around the world, creating massive amounts of content that you're going to need to leverage to see success in your organization. And this is going to create a, a great opportunity for, for data scientists and citizen data scientists alike. Because without more people asking more questions and more data, things might not end so well. We are clearly in the fourth industrial age, this age of data science and analytics. And it's true that not everyone who owns the data has data science skills and vice versa. But what we do know for sure, no matter what subjects you read or, or magazines you, you peruse, it's pretty clear that there's somewhere between 10 and $15 trillion of value that's locked up in dark data across enterprises. Only 3% of data actually gets used today by enterprises around the world. 3%, 97% of the data is dark, just waiting to be prosecuted by more people in your organization. The reason this is important is that if you can't figure out how to leverage that data, things are not going to end so well in the future for you. You either have to evolve or go away. Early in my career, a sales consultant said to me, you know, Dean, there's only one of two states you can be in. You're either composing or you're decomposing. And there's nothing that's more true in the data science and analytics world. If you started a business 100 years ago, your half-life would be about 100 years. Today, Ford Motor Company, for example, only makes F-150 trucks. That's it. They're down to, down to one vehicle type. If you had asked Henry Ford back in the 1800s what people needed, most people would say, we need a faster horse 100 years later. They struggle. Today, the half-life of organizations is just 15 years. It's estimated that half of the Fortune 500 will be gone in the next decade. Now, I, I don't know about you guys, but I think this is the reason you want to engage in digital transformation. Not because you want to make more people happier, not that you want to drive a little bit more incremental profit at the top line or the bottom line or growth at the top line. The reason you want to do it is you might not be around otherwise. And this is hard for lots of organizations. Thinking differently, reimagining themselves, pretty difficult proposition to put in front of your board. But it's hard. Why? Because all the things that made your organization great and got you here, just know that they are not going to get you to the next level. Boy, I, think about this, this uh, half-life. If, if I were at Blockbuster Video, I would have been scared to death that a Netflix might come along. Blockbuster Video should have been Netflix. They missed it twice, not only on, because they had all the data about who was consuming videos. They just didn't anticipate the disruption that was going to occur in digital transformation. They could have even bought Netflix for $50 million and turned that down, too. I think that Sears Roebuck, one of the greatest American retailers of all time, should have been 
Amazon, listed by that much. Polaroid, Panasonic, um, Kodak. These guys could have been Apple. Again, they missed all the signs, they missed all the signals. But you're going to have to figure out digital disruption within your organizations because that's going to occur very, very quickly. Now, before we talk about the state of your organization, let me just give you a few facts and figures based upon a study we conducted earlier this year with IDC. Some pretty startling facts when you consider this is just a very small portion of the data that we uh, had collected by, by IDC. There were a total of 836 analysts that were surveyed around the world in every vertical and every functional use case in most countries, certainly in all theaters. Turns out that there are 206, um, 216 million knowledge workers around the world. 54 million of them are what are known as data workers, people who work with data all day long. 54 million. 47 million of them live in complex VLOOKUPs all day long. How many, how many live in VLOOKUPs? I know you don't want to raise your hand. Your job sucks. That's, that's right. There's 15 million of these data workers here in APAC. 15 million. And this is how they spend their days. 90% of data workers' time is spent on these activities. 33% in preparing data, just preparing data to get to some analytic outcome. Staggering. 32% involved in analytics. 15% just trying to find the data. Why? Because it's not even behind your four walls anymore. It's out in the cloud. It's APIs coming from various sources that might affect your particular industry. It could be you know, uh, an Adobe Omniture API, it could be something coming from Nielsen, it could be uh, some oil and drilling information that, that's available that you might subscribe to. But this is how data workers spend their day. I wouldn't like my job either. Look at that, just staggering what's going on in a lack of productivity. Most of it's wasted. 40% of a, 44 percent of a data worker's time is wasted on these same activities. <clears throat> 51% are wasting all their time trying to find the data assets. Boy, the neck hole for a, a cataloging service, a social catalog to make it easy to find the assets that can affect my journey. 47% really struggle with data prep. Copy and paste, copy and paste, embedded formulas that you forgot to update. If you go, if you go Google uh, Excel errors, you'll find lots of them, and not little ones, $100 million errors. See it all day long, enterprises around the world. This is just a terrible, a terrible thing that's happening in enterprises around the world. I'm sure it's happening within your organization. And here are the challenges. All the time spent wasted in these activities. The analysts, 33% say they spend way too much time in data prep. Slow response, because if you didn't have something like a platform, an end-to-end -end platform like Alteryx, we know what would happen. You want to have that, you want to solve that uh, complex uh, hyper-local merchandising program at your FMCG company or your retail organization. You got to ask somebody to go get the data for you. Then you got to give it to someone else who uses a different tool to prepare it and organize it. You got to give it to someone else to apply spatial logic to it. You got to give it to somebody else to build models around it. Then you got to finally give it to someone else who's going to prepare it in a maybe a dashboard. The machine learning is going to eat the world, so maybe visualization isn't, isn't as important in the long run. These are the challenges that data workers face around the globe. $120 billion of waste just living inside of Excel. And here's the rub. The average analytic process is just a cognitive load that's frustrating to everybody. This research that we did with IEDC proved that average analytic process needs at least six disparate inputs. Maybe it's big data, little data, structured, unstructured, data in the cloud, on the ground, it's spreadsheets, it might be coming from PDFs, it might be APIs, it's all over the place. We wouldn't exist if, if 
there was a single version of the truth of data, but that's never going to happen anymore. That, that ship sailed a long time ago. And you need seven different outputs. Why? Because the C-suite might need a simple dashboard because that's all they can understand. Somebody else needs it as a machine learning algorithm that's embedded back into Salesforce because you need to make my sales team more efficient. It might mean that you're writing it back to a persistence layer. I might need it as a component in, in some mobile app or web app. Boy, this is really a struggle. And, and the difficult part is right in the middle. You need no less than four and as many as seven disparate tools. We didn't change the analytic process, we unified the experience. And you'll see this in the demonstrations that, that uh, we have for you here today. So because the analysts can't get their work done, most analysts resort back to Excel. 88% of data workers use spreadsheet for data activities. I know you didn't raise your hand, but remember, we're living in a big data world. And you're using a spreadsheet that was built in the 70s with a million row limit. I mean, how, how long can that work for you? 60% of data workers, 24 hours a, a week are spent in spreadsheets. <clears throat> Most of that is just copying and pasting. Just copying and pasting. I mean, this is just craziness that we're putting ourselves through. So that, that's the challenge that we've got for you to get through that digital transformation journey that you're embarking on. Why? Because that half-life is going to nip you in the bud if you're, you're not careful. The other thing that's really important is not just the lack of productivity in the line of business where all that context around the questions exist in, in organizations. But a lot of organizations just aren't really ready for digital transformation. There's a bunch of data that's available today that will help you measure the, the state of the analytic maturity in your organizations. There's a bunch of research around uh, Tom Davenport and some of what he's written about. Uh, uh, International Institute of, of Analytics publishes a, a bunch of documents around uh, analytic maturity in organizations. <clears throat> and of course, the maturity is kind of a five-stage uh, uh, journey, all the way from analytically impaired, which means they have no idea what analytics is or what it does, where the data uh, is located and what might be done with it to see success and operational efficiency improvements, top line performance, bottom line gains, cost savings, and all the other KPIs that might affect you and your, your industries, all the way up through being analytically savvy, being one of the most competitive organizations who've seen data as an asset and who've built a data science and analytics culture that intends to win and survive that half-life of organizations around the world. Now, I don't know where you guys think you're at in this uh, maturity curve, but this is where ground truth is. Across these five stages, <clears throat> all organizations around the world tend to sit at a level, a low level two. <clears throat> Localized analytics. Yeah, we're doing a little bit of analytics for KPI development. We're measuring sales performance. We're measuring customer acquisition costs, perhaps. Maybe we're doing some work in FP&A. But overall, no one is near where they should be to make sure that they uh, get past that, that half-life of enterprises. And even if you took the most sophisticated, successful organization on planet Earth in this assessment cohort, it's, it's marked as the leaders at the bottom and all other firms in the range, you would see that even the most um, uh, savvy organizations that are considered leaders have a median of 3.32. They're nowhere close to analytic nirvana. Again, 3% of all data gets used, and my guess is not that well. Imagine what you could do. No surprise why the five most valuable companies on planet Earth are digital companies. And everyone wants to make sure that they're not disintermediated by them. <clears throat> That's all in your hands, actually. And you think, oh, but we're in the financial services sector. We're smarter than most. Or we're in the manufacturing business. Or we're in big pharma. The reality is almost nobody is doing well. I don't know where your industry is, but you can see them 
along here. Maybe this is the reason why healthcare is so screwed up around the world. <laughs> they don't know anything about my body. They know nothing about the practice. They know nothing about how to deliver incremental value. And then of course, no surprise well, why the highest ranked organizations are digitally native. Isn't that scary? I don't know where you sit in here, but if I were you, I would be worried. Now there's a way for you to overcome all this. <clears throat> It's, it's to start your own journey, your own journey around digital transformation. Sometimes this is hard for executives to admit that we're not the smartest guys on the planet, that we're not thinking about what's going to protect the organization. We're not sure how to build a deep and wide moat to make sure that we don't see the disruption <clears throat> that other organizations have, have uh, succumbed to. The first thing I would do, though, if you want to be successful at digital transformation, is you have to find the ambassadors. You know, they say that somewhere between 5 and 8% of all workers are data workers. Yeah, within financial services or any uh, services-based business, it's probably closer to 30, 40, maybe even 50%. Maybe in manufacturing, it's at 5%. But, but there is a, a big, broad audience of people who want to engage in analytics. You need to find who those people are that want to leave your company, because they're all going to leave. I sat at a major retailer recently. We sat around the room, very successful, big global retailer, and they said, well, we don't really believe in analytics that much. And I looked at the analysts in the room whose lives depend on analytics. And I looked at the, the executive and I said, well, these people are all going to be gone here soon. Sure enough, they're all gone. They left. The only ambassadors that they had in the room have walked out the door. You need to find who these change agents are. The people who are creative and curious. They're not afraid to dig into data, go find data, and, and, and build analytic solutions that move the needle for your organization. Everyone wants to be just like those successful folks. When you start your journey, you find a bunch of them across your organization because they're found everywhere. They're in HR. I hear executives say all the time, uh, we don't have enough smart people to do analytics very well. The re reality is, near my home in Irvine, California, they're teaching fourth graders machine learning with Python. Never sell out the human. They're all over the place within your organizations. So find those ambassadors, and then begin the journey. Embark on that self-service journey to analytic independence and get yourself to digital transformation success so that you can outlast the half-life of organizations around the world. And that means you have to have an easy, easy to use, self-service, data science and analytics platform. That makes it really easy to find the data, prepare the data, create analytics that matter, and deploy it in metaphors that people can understand across the enterprise. And maybe in your early part of the journey, it's driving data into dashboards, the clicks and the tableaus and the Power BI's. Because that's where people start with descriptive analytics. But, but this isn't a one-shot journey. This is a journey that you're going to need to do all kinds of other things in the future once you get past that basic data prep and blending capability. It's about that second stage of the analytic journey. It's unleashing advanced analytics from spatial modeling to predictive modeling to machine learning algorithms being deployed in systems that allow people to know what to do next. There's no time for a rear view mirror facing technologies. It's all about what's going to happen in the future. And of course, if you've chosen the right platform, uh, this is a platform that's going to allow the Mere mortal in the line of business who, without it, hates their job because it's complex VLOOKUPs as their choice because IT hasn't delivered on the promises of the past. It's, it's a code-friendly approach, a drag-and-drop, click-and-run environment that allows people to be productive in their jobs, to see incremental successes because everyone wants to be 
like that analyst. <clears throat> it's also a part of the journey that can address what we see as the convergence of the two most important people in organizations today. Not only that citizen data scientist, where we're amplifying human intelligence, but that trained statistician who they don't frankly like their jobs much either. either. Why? Most of them say the models they build and want to deploy never get deployed. Only 13% of trained statisticians say their models always get deployed. Well, if those are the benchmarks for success in, in the data science world, then we're all at risk in, in di digital disruption. But it's beyond this capability for the data scientists to monitor and manage and publish models. It's about scaling this across the organization. Digital success is about liberating analytics across the enterprise. It's democratizing data in ways that most organizations have never seen before. I mean, there's a reason Ultrix is growing at 59%. It's because we're delivering that heart-pounding, thrill-of-solving moment for analysts across the world. And of course, I think we've proven that analytics is a social experience. People need to find a, a platform that allows them to discover the assets that have been curated by other people, to understand analytic pipelines and what's causing some results. It, it's a, a platform that allows you to collaborate with the most important part of metadata, the people who are involved in curating the assets. It used to be that people would have these, these technologies and it made them look really smart. You know, things like predictive modeling tools like SAS or SPSS or GIS software like Esri, and people would protect it. What we need to do is liberate it. We need to liberate it across the masses to get access to that 10 to $15 trillion of value that's locked up in data sources. It's about getting to scale. If I've built analytic pipelines that work, why can't I put them on a server and give them to everybody? Why can't I build a, an app without writing a stitch of code and share it with my ecosystem of customers and partners? This is all about digital transformation to make sure you, you survive the half-life of organizations around the world. And to do it in a scalable, governed approach, because we know IT still cares about that stuff. It's important. And the last part of that analytic and data science journey is building a sustaining culture for long-term growth in your organization because that first slide was probably the most important slide. Data is not going to ever get any smaller. It's not ever going to get any more disparate. It's not ever going to get any you know, less complex. And so if we don't embrace this now to create a culture of sharing and collaborating and designing analytic pipelines that matter, you might be at risk. It's the, the platform that we sell to banks to do derivatives modeling. Same platform that we sell to FMCG to do hyper-local merchandising. It's the same platform we sell to device makers to collect all the information about you and your behaviors. It's the same platform we sell to NFL football teams to, to do sentiment analysis in the, in the stadium in the middle of the game, in section 3F. It's the same platform because we've liberated analytics across the enterprise. And of course, it's a chance to be part of a community bigger than yourself. A chance to share in use cases and outcomes that matter. I don't know if you, uh, how many of you are not Ultrix users today, but I'd go to community.ultrix.com. You'll see a couple of hundred documented use cases, most of which have been, been produced by your peers, people who've been down this journey. People who have done it the old way and failed. People who have hated their jobs and finally they got back to life. They love their jobs again because we turned every data worker into a discoverer of marginal profitability across the enterprise. And it's all because we've proven that analytics is a social experience. So we're on this mission. We're, we're on this mission to be the analytic fabric of enterprises around the world. A platform that provides the analysts with the ability to 
love their jobs again. To deal with all the messy data that the world might throw at it. And all of the questions that might exist. From little questions to big questions to, to even questions that you never thought you could ask before. Both for the citizen data scientists who never thought they could be a participant in the data science world. And the trained statistician who drives value for organizations around the globe. At the same time, we're breaking down the barriers with IT, making sure that we can provide the security and governance and scalability to keep the organization safe. This is our mission, to be that analytic fabric of enterprises around the globe. <clears throat> and this is why 33 per use case you can imagine. Starts with a trial experience, 14-day trial, you download it. Um, most customers tell us they learned the platform over a ham sandwich. They took a 100-hour process to five minutes, and they began to realize what was possible with modern tools. Use cases you can never imagine before. Community.altrix.com. With that, thank you so much for being here. I hope some of those statistics are revealing to you. Make sure that you take them back to your C-suite. And uh, here's my hope that you'll survive the half-life of organizations around the world. Thank you very much. <laughs>